we were all hoping that Manchester United against Newcastle was going to be a return to football, return to the Ragnick revolution, and it was not, was it? It was a one-all draw, but it was it was a game where after after it, Gary Neville blasted the sort of body language and the physicality of, of Bruno Fernandes, of Cristiano Ronaldo. And since the fallout has not been very pretty. And all the fingers are pointing at the players. There's no Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to hide behind anymore. This is down to the players. And don't tell me that the 4 triple two system can't work. It worked against Crystal Palace for 60 minutes when the players actually wanted to work. The attitude stank against Newcastle. And there's no doubt that there's going to be changes made to the team. What I'm going to do in this video is run through my predicted 11 that I think Ragnick's going to go for because he has to be ruthless. If we look here at the starting 11 before I do, I suppose... Look, please, if you would consider subscribing to United People's TV, I'd love to have you on board. I'm glad to be back after being missing for a couple of weeks with COVID. A bit like Manchester United were missing for the majority of the game there against Newcastle because that was such a poor performance from Manchester United. Overall, every single player, really. If you're going to try and isolate where the biggest problems were in terms of attitude, you're probably going to go for Bruno Fernandes. You're probably going to go for Cristiano Ronaldo. And I would say that I'd say they, they were the main two perpetrators. Of course, there's going to be an enforced change against Burnley. And that's because Bruno Fernandes is missing from the game. So we know he's going to be missing. But we're looking at this overall team here. This is the team that started there against Newcastle. And the majority of our problems existed here. Inside that front four, which, which just seemed very, very disconnected from each other. They didn't really know what they were doing with each other. And the work rate just, not, just was not there. But as I said at the start, this formation worked against Crystal Palace. Those players worked against Crystal Palace and work is the thing that they seem to be scared of. There has to be changes. Now, I personally don't think there's actually going to be any changes to that back six. I think they're all going to start this game there, including David De Gea, who's sneaking off screen. I think he's been, well, he's somehow managed to avoid this slump that all our other players seem to be in. Now, of course, there's going to be arguments and conversations about Maguire. Maguire, Maguire, Maguire. At the same vein, though, Varane was poor. Very poor against Newcastle, but I certainly wouldn't drop Varane. Varane's back in this team. Now, Eric Bai, he apparently has been called... Was he not going to AFCON just yet? Or he has gone? I don't know. But would you... I think I know the answer to this for a lot of you. Would you drop Maguire for Bai? I think I probably would. If he was fit and ready to play. Maguire, as so many of you wanted him to be stripped of the, of the captaincy... As soon as Ragnick came in, I said that's an unreasonable expectation. I said it 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 go it all it will be a case of Ragnick makes his own decisions based on what he sees from Maguire. Now Maguire actually did progress the ball against Newcastle, probably more so than most players did, and that's what he's good at. That's the Maguire I thought we were gonna that we signed from Leicester, the one I was excited about, the guy, the centre back who sort of breaks through the out of defence, bringing the ball, good progressive passes, fast, incisive progressive passes. It's the speed of things that are sucking with Maguire right now and then the fact that he's a crap defender at the moment but I don't think there's going to be any changes inside that back six that's my own opinion you might disagree on that one but I think he's going to stick with it McTominay and Fred did it work against Newcastle no did it work against Crystal Palace yes I, I think if we're looking at our problems of course our problems do exist in midfield and we know that there's no way that Manchester United can win a Premier League with a midfield two of McTominay and Fred now, I think if we're going to address anywhere in the January transfer window, it will be here. It will be with someone like Amadou Haidara or any of the other midfielders we're getting linked with. That is where we can strengthen in the January transfer window. I just don't think there's going to be a change in that position against Burnley. But I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot of changes going inside this front four. I'll run into that next. But before I do, please consider watching the advert and sticking around. It does help United People's TV. Big up to OneFootball for continuing to support United People's TV. So make sure you go over and you support OneFootball. If you haven't already downloaded the app, the link is in the description. It's free to download. And over this mad festive period, you can get all the Manchester United news, match updates, team updates, match stats, match reactions, everything you need about Manchester United and all the latest transfer news ahead of what could be a busy January transfer window for United and get it all in the one football app all you got to do is follow the link in the description as i said one football big supporters of united people's tv so go and show them some love if you haven't already downloaded the app the link is in the description but let's talk about this midfield eh thanks very much for sticking around and let's talk about this attack 
I mean, I said, if, if, if I can re reverse a little bit, you could throw Matic in midfield. I, I suppose the reason I overlook Matic so much is because I'm just, I don't know, it's just, I, I don't really consider Matic an option in midfield, and I kind of should, I said, to, a, to a degree. But it's just a bit slow, right? But when it comes to this Manchester United team, what's the thing we're missing? It's the control. Well, maybe Matic could be better inside that midfield to offer that control. So maybe you can't rule that out completely. But as I said, in the front four, there's going to be changes galore. Now, this man, you can let me know what you think about this in the comments. Whether or not you would have dropped Bruno Fernandes anyway against Burnley, regardless of whether he was suspended. So he's suspended. So it, it takes the question away from, uh, from Ralph Radnick. Bruno's off. So who comes in for Bruno? And I think we all know who the standout option really is. And that's Donny. Now, Donny is not the messiah of midfield, but this is a situation where Paul Pogba is injured and Bruno Fernandes is suspended. Therefore, it's a, it's a position where Donny van der Beek, in my opinion, comes in. If we're looking at control, he's somebody who should operate in that position a little bit smarter, I believe, than what Bruno Fernandes has been doing. Bruno Fernandes has been massively guilty. If we go down here, we bring him back on the pitch for this. He's been massively guilty of just like not occupying that role as he should. He should stick in and around this area. We know where he is. That's 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 your position, Bruno, man. Stay in that, stay in your lane. Stay in that area. But Bruno drops deep so often. Receives the ball here. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's basically everywhere he shouldn't be. And it's a bit of a chaotic movement from Bruno, which leaves Manchester United with a lack of control because he's not in the right position at the right time to receive the ball and get nice intricate passing swifter passing, quicker passing. I think that's where Donny can be good. I think the system does suit him. I backed him as one of the three players to really shine under Ralph Rudnick. I backed Fred as the other one, and I backed Jaden Sancho. And if I'm looking at another change I'm going to be doing, well, I've spoiled it there, but you know exactly what I'm doing. First of all, never play Rashford on the right-hand side again, please, Ralph. It does not work. It will not ever, ever work. Rashford should, I'll, regardless of whether he's playing on the left and right, left or right-hand side right now, he should be dropped on four. And Jaden Sancho should be coming in. And I think that is a, a midfield, as I said, it, this 4 triple 2 for me, is a system which I, it does, it will work at this Manchester United team. It's not that different to the 4 2 3 one that we have used for so often under Solskjaer. Now, I'm not saying that that was a good formation. I'm not saying it worked for Manchester United because so often it did not work. But I think absolutely this 4 triple 2 can and will work with Manchester United. These players have just got to work, pull their socks up and realise they are professional football players being paid millions of pounds to play football. So you play it and you put 110% in. They've been too many passengers in this team for too long. And I'm glad right now that there's no manager to hide behind because everybody needs to pull their socks. Apart from David De Gea, who's, who's, as I said, somehow has managed to keep his form up. So I would play Van Der Beek and Sancho as the two number 10s. Now, what about up front? Because there's clearly problems there too. May this is what I would do. I would take Mason Greenwood off, and you know exactly who I'm going to put on. And that's Edison Cavani. A man who, you know, will he leave in January? We can't rule it out. Barcelona being heavily linked with a move for him. He could leave. If he leaves, we lose a massive uh, example, the right example of what our team and our players need to do in Edison Cavani. And I think when, you brought, when we brought Cavani on and we brought Sancho on, at the very least, we had a different tempo against Newcastle. And I think both, for me, both of those have to start against Burnley. I think they set a different sort of tempo. I think those two together complement each other a little bit better. I don't think Mason Greenwood has particularly worked very well with Cristiano Ronaldo in the same way that Cristiano Ronaldo hasn't worked particularly well with Mason Greenwood. I'm not pointing the finger at Mason. I'm saying as a partnership, it's not really come to fruition yet, has it? We know that Ronaldo and Cavani can do that together. They'll offer better positions. They'll, they'll occupy better positions. They'll play off each other a bit more. Ronaldo won't just be isolated. But what we, need, what we do need to see from Manchester United's players is spotting these runs from Ronaldo. So when you, when you get in a position where, say, it's Sancho over here. Sancho's got the ball. McTominay's coming up here. And Ronaldo's there. He's on the shoulder of a defender. And he wants to run into this position. He wants to occupy that. So he, sprint, he makes a sprint. We need to see Manchester United finding those balls in behind for Ronaldo to get on. A lot of his runs do get ignored. And I understand that's where a lot of his frustration has been coming from. But at the same time, Ronaldo can't be throwing his hands up in the air. His attitude... If he, if he throws his hands up in the air, it means everyone else can throw their hands up in the air. 
he has to set the example, even if he is got frustrated. And of course he is. He's used to winning things. He's not used to playing scrappy games against Norwich and Newcastle, is he? It, that that kind of is what it is. But for me, that's the changes I would like to see against Burnley. Sticking to the four triple two. Do not change the system. We change a system that's pandering to the players. I want these players to work hard to be in this system. This system clearly works, has worked for Ralph Rannick over his career. It's a system which he knows is good. He knows the benefits of it, and he knows that it's not the easy thing to do. The body language, being first to the second balls, everything you listen to in terms of reaction to the Newcastle game from Rannick, you can see where his frustrations lie. But as I will go back to, this formation worked against Crystal Palace after one training session. And the only thing that's different between now and that game against Newcastle and then and that game against Crystal Palace is the effort, is the work rate. And it can work with these players. It has worked with these players and it will work with these players. And it has to work right now, man. I have to see more from Ronaldo up front. I have to see more from Cavani for starting. I don't think we need to ask for more for Cavani. I think we'll just get it straight away. I think Sancho and Van der Beek, I think they can operate well in those positions. If it wasn't Van der Beek who's playing there instead of Bruno, who are you playing there? You let me know what you think. It may well be Marcus Rashford. I would like to see Van der Beek there because we need that element of control. It's not just, not just all about speed, speed, speed in our front four. We have to be able to control the ball and hold possession in these sorts of areas so that we can pull teams out of position. And maybe Van, Van der Beek wouldn't be as good in terms of the aggressive press in that number 10 position compared to Rashford, but hell, I'd like to see it. And I think Rashford's form right now means that he deserves a place on that bench. And of course, I think you can say the same thing about Maguire. But, and I think it could happen as well. I could definitely see Bai coming in for Maguire. It's just this is my predicted 11. Not exactly what I definitely think he'll start. I don't think there's going to be any changes in that back six. Back one, one two, three. I can't even count. One, two, three. It's back seven. Jeez. Anyway, got there in the end. Uh, back seven with David De Gea. Back six, if you're just looking at the outfield players. There you go. That's my, that's my get out clause. Maybe you'll see Matic coming in to add a bit more control in that midfield. Maybe not. I don't know. But I'm going for that as a front four of Sancho, Van der Beek, Cavani and Ronaldo. Three changes from the team that played Newcastle. One enforced with Bruno and switching out Rashford and Greenwood for Cavani and Sancho. Van der Beek's coming in for Bruno. What do you think about that formation? Would you be happy with that? Do you think that team could beat Burnley? Of course that team could beat Burnley. And as I said, this formation worked against Crystal Palace because the players put the effort in. So we need. It's simple. I mean, it's not the be-all and end-all, but without that effort, success is very hard to achieve. Wins are hard to achieve. Overall performances are hard to achieve. The very minimum, we should be competitive for the 90 minutes with that formation, with that 11 under Ralph Radnick. And that's what we need to see against Burnley. Who would, what changes would you like to see? That would be my starting 11. As I said, ruthlessness is the biggest thing we need right now. Ralph has no loyalty to any of these players, and he shouldn't do. And everybody should be fearful of their place in the eleven, including Ronaldo, including every single player in that team. But that's the team I would like to see against Burnley. Quite a few changes, and we need a change in attitude and approach from that Newcastle game if we're going to do anything inside this top four this season. We saw it against Crystal Palace, so don't tell me we can't do it in this team, in this system, in this formation. We can. It's all down to whether the players want to fucking work or not. And we need to see that against Burnley. But that's my team. Let me know what you, who your team would be in the comments below, as you always do. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. Until next time, take it easy.